Today, I want to welcome back to the show Steve Falconer. He is a researcher into all things hidden, esoteric, and out of the ordinary daily experience with a gift for demystifying occulted information. He is a prolific political commentator and the voice of Space Busters on YouTube, BitChute, Odyssey, and Vigilante.tv. He is author of the children's book, The Dukes of Dents, and a former writer and administrator for Truth Serum News. Steve, welcome back. How you doing? Excellent, brother. Thanks for having me back, man. It's good to be back, and I uh, think we're going to get weird today Always, again. Man. It was a good show last time. Great one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love the information last time. Really looking forward to this one. Today, we're going to discuss the nature of reality as it relates to the realm we exist in. Now, Flat Earth is a very divisive topic within this community. I've done a handful of episodes that delve into Flat Earth, and I find that much of the information that is presented here in previous episodes really has powerful implications, but I find some of the guests also have limitations with the information. There are certain contradictions that come up. I would not consider myself a flat earther. I lean more towards the possibility of a holographic simulated reality, although that probably really limits what this experience really is. But you've done some incredible research, and I really look forward to weaving in your perspectives into my considerations. So before we get into this, it's been a little while since you've been on. Remind the audience a little bit about yourself and your work. Uh, well, you all know me as uh, one of the voices of Space Busters, so I'm a filmmaker, I'm a musician as well. Um, I, we have a channel called Space Busters where we've done all kinds of weird uh, content. I got, as as we said last time, I got known when the germ theory bullshit, the, the convid came out. Um, that's kind of where I got launched into more popularity because, you know, I knew about that for a long time and had a medical background. So, um, but I, you know, I've been getting into con uh, comets, cataclysms, resets, giants, Tartaria, you know, down this, every wide spectrum, uh, who runs the world, you know, we've done some of that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm just like you, I'm just a guy who's trying to figure out what's going on. And, um, as you talked about the burden of proof, in a court of law lies on those making the claim, right? So when if I don't like the word flat earth, um, I'm not the one who said the earth's flat or a ball or it's this or that. I didn't claim that. My school claimed that. The Jesuits claimed that. Everyone who told me about where I live claimed that. So I think what, instead of saying the earth is flat or the earth is this or that or whatever, um, the burden of proof is on them. You told us in school that we live on this. And you can't prove it. And everything we've ever done to, to check you has come out, no. <laughs> Where do we live? I don't fucking know. Mm. I don't know. I don't claim to know. I'm going to show you what the Freemasons think and what secret societies think and give you an idea of where we might live. But I'm not here to tell you where we live. I can tell you where we don't live, mm. and it's not on the shit we've been taught. Right on. So Now, I understand you're going to be presenting this... some information from the Book of Wisdom, and I'm very much looking yeah. forward to getting into this. First, what was some of the most profound evidence for you that got you really looking at the possibility that we're not on what we've been told? For me, it was, uh, Ross is the other space buster. It was our own test. We got a P900 mm -hmm. camera and we started going out and doing distance tests with vi just visual distance tests because we're lucky. Denmark's very flat. Um, we have salt home, which is the, the lowest Island in the world. It has an average height above sea level of three feet. And it's been there. We have ancient records of Danes being there 1200 years ago. <laughs> so we can see right over it to Malmo, Sweden across the water uh, you can see the bottom of the Swedish beaches when you zoom in, right? Like we, there's the, we just took the, the curve we're told eight inches per square mile, which does, that has a problem over once you get around a quarter of the geometry of the earth, there's a problem with that calculation, but no one's looking that far anyway. So for what we're looking at, when you're told eight inches square, now not eight inches per mile, that's a ramp. This is where a lot of people get confused. We're, it, we're, the earth, they're not saying the Earth's a ramp, like a triangle. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so they're not saying every mile it should be eight inches lower of curve. Every first mile is eight inches. The next one is squared mm. and squared again. So it's dropping off deeper and deeper and deeper. And yet when you have a P900 camera, you can see things that are impossible to see on their model. You can zoom in and see ships that have allegedly gone over a horizon, right? You can send a balloon up 120,000 feet and it's dead flat if you don't have a fisheye lens. Mm -hmm. Now, fisheye lenses make everything round. So in other words, you know, that picture behind me, and that picture behind me, I chose this. It's just like the ball earth model. That's a real picture, but it's it's not really behind me. It's green screen, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm not saying that picture's not real. I'm saying I'm not sitting in front of it right now. That's that's what we're presented. Um, so you say, oh, well, you, you know, you can't. Uh, Neil Tyson, the Neil deGrasse Tyson, will say, oh yeah, but at 120,000 feet in the air, you still the Earth's so big you can't see the curve. Yet NASA will show you pictures from just that high with a curve. And then they'll say, well, you can't see a boat going over horizon because it's curving. And you're like, well, how can I not see it three miles in front of me if I can't see 120,000, you know? Yeah. And then, of course, with a P900, when you zoom in, the boats come up. It's just visual perspective, as we all learned in art class. Up comes down and down comes up, reaches a convergence point. And farther than that point, like that picture behind me, you know, the clouds are thousands and thousands of feet above that background where am i at <laughs> but at the here they look like they're just right above the the buildings i don't i can't it's all yeah. backward there yeah yeah the clouds are not right above these buildings back yeah. here they're up there but they look because they're further away they look lower and you can see the balcony i'm on is not 2000 denmark's flat as shit so the balcony behind me is not 2,000 feet lower than this horizon line. That's just farther away. Mm. I'm higher than what you see. So down comes up, up comes down, left comes right, right comes left. So a lot of mistakes we have is what's called visual perspective or convergence and divergence. Behind that horizon line, the clouds obviously keep going. So technically, they're below that horizon behind me, right? Mm. If you just kept going further and further, 20 miles away, these clouds would look like they're going lower and lower and lower, and this city will look like it's going higher and higher and higher. Right. But it will always stop right dead center of your screen. See how it's, that's called the Horus, which is the sun, eye zone, the horizon, mm. right? So for me, I was the same. I, I ran into Eric Dubai and Dave Weiss and all these people, and I thought, oh, okay, okay what is this flat earth bullshit? <laughs> right we all did it we're like i i believe in a lot of stuff but flat earth fuck off uh, until you start looking at it and then you have to do your own experiments and then you start noticing water is always level unless it's in the sea but your pond in your backyard's level it's not moving the moon is supposed to be affecting the ocean tides but your coffee cup's sitting dead still at night with the moon overhead the <laughs> pond in your back isn't moving it doesn't affect small bodies of water, but it raises oceans up. You're like, what? And your body's 90% water. So why aren't you wobbling around like a weeble wobble, you know, if the moon's supposedly doing that to the ocean? Wouldn't it be knocking you all over the place? You know, so to me, it's all observation. And again, I'm not here to prove the earth is flat. I'm here to disprove that the earth is what they say it is. Right on, right on. That's a great introduction. Let's get into the Book of Wisdom. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, this is a cool book. I've got the Hearth book, too. Um, it's it's by a guy called Harry B. Joseph. I, oh, my green screen's blacking out. I've got a digital version, so we won't have to look at it like mm -hmm. this. And he, this is basically, he's taken the work of um, many other researchers and authors and the Freemasons and all the secret societies and temples and... Um, He's giving credit to people like Santos Bonacci, Divine Being, Bro Sanchez, Walter Russell, Ken Wheeler, Joe Dispenza, a lot of others. So, again, what, what we'll look at today is not my information. Um, the only reason I'm using it is I have the book in a digital form. And uh, it's, it's laid out so nicely, it's very just easy to scroll through and look at it. And we can just talk about it. To start with why you asked me to talk about this, you know, how did you get into it and what's, what's your concern? So, I... 
notice the same things that you do. I've watched the videos. I've heard the presentations. I've had different guests on that present the evidence. And there is lots of evidence there that shows that we are not on a spinning ball hurling through space. That on top of the inconsistencies with NASA's presentation of information, the flat-out fakery that they've presented that alone is enough to get a person asking questions much less the moon footage if you just take two minutes to look at any of that you can see that it's just a horrible production it has fakery written all over it so there are plenty of red flags this is the realm that we live in and what we've been presented is a lie I think it's about time we at least start to understand what the hell we're on. Yeah, and I always start with um, this model came in through the Jesuits. This is a Copernicus Jesuit model. It comes in at the same time our calendar comes in, the Gregorian calendar, right? And it comes in at the same time our English language comes in. And this goes down to copyright law. So we all know a, a lot of your people probably get into like, the law scam, you know, your straw man, your fictitious all caps name, the sticker on your shirt that says you're this corporation when you're not. Well, this is how copyright law works. Um, the woman who wrote Harry Potter, I always forget her name when I need to remember it, but uh, <laughs> right, she owns the copyright on Harry Potter. She owns the universe, the names of the characters, the story. If you and I go out and start dressing up like Harry Potter and doing uh, conventions for money, we owe her money. We can't just go around dressing up like Harry Potter, charging tickets. We have to pay her copyright royalty. This is what we're on. They made a fake timeline, a new calendar that people never were on this calendar. So it's a fake time you exist and that they own the copyright to. They made a new model of the earth. All the ancients said it was a flat, non-rotating, non-spinning thing, right? And, so, and they made your name in all caps letters. They made a new you a fictional corporation that you have to agree with. So any commerce you do business on this earth in their fake timeline on their fake world (laughs) with your fake name, your taxes go to the Vatican Mm. through your IRS and through your government and all that. That's how this is a money scam. And it also helps you. You're what you could call godless because you think you exploded from nothing exploded into everything and nothing is somehow expanding into more (laughs) nothing, but it's something ever eternal. And then monkeys and fish came out of the sea from a lightning bolt. And who are you? Who, Who are you? Right. But if you understand that this realm is very special and everything we experience, I'm not saying this is all there is. I'm saying our experience of it is that we're the center. We're not some random accident flying out there. Well, now you're special, as is everything here, not just you, the animals, the plants, the the world. It's special if it's not, oh, we're just planet number one out of 30 trillion, you know, endlessly flying around. And, of course, I won't get into that because everyone talks about that. You're spinning 1,000 miles an hour this way, going 666,000 miles an hour, corkscrew around the sun going blah, blah, blah. You're, you're traveling like Mach 40, you know, and you can't even go Mach 8 without your body jellifying. <laughs> but you can, but the pond behind you is dead still. So, you know, that's ridiculous. But that's when people say, well, what's the point of this? You know, it's the point is, if this is a lie, you start to realize everything else is a lie. And then you start looking into law and copyright and sovereignty and you start looking into germ theory and every other thing and you're like well if they're lying about where you live (laughs) do you think they might be lying about everything else yeah you know do i care that the earth is flat or not no right it doesn't stop me from Mm -hmm. grocery store like you know but uh it just once you realize this and you start seeing through it and as you said why would they be faking all this ISS? It, just show us a picture of the Earth. You sent Cassini, you said, all the way out past Saturn and out past Pluto and all that. You didn't turn it around and take a picture of the Earth? We still don't have a real photograph of the Earth, mm-hmm. but you sent Cassini out and it didn't. you didn't turn it around and take a picture? 
Oh, we can't. We can take composites. Just show us. That's all we're saying is if you're telling the truth, why are you faking all this shit? And we catch them faking everything with CGI, mm -hmm. right? Why would you? Just common sense tells you why would you be faking all this if it were real? It seems like sometimes they're gaslighting to a point where they want you to find out, or at least those that have eyes to see. They throw out these little hints, clues, and symbols so that some of us will grasp onto this and start to become aware of it. Yeah, and like you said, you know, there's the idea that we live in a simulation. You know, there's there's other ideas out there about what or what this is or isn't or where we are. And that's another one of the big things. From from this cosmology comes the next step, which is my buddy Steve Young talks about materialism, atomism. It takes out spiritualism. There's just physical. There's little atoms that somehow magically turn into molecules and all everything runs on that. And you're just a meat suit and, you, you know, it's there's this. So this starts building on the next layer of fraud and the next layer of fraud. The banking's built on that. And it just, this is like the foundation of the fraud because they don't want you to know that you can manifest reality, that you are spirit and physical entwined and that you can do things that make you so powerful you can't even imagine. And if you know how this realm works, probably works which we'll get into today then you'll understand wave mechanics and not particle physics which are all theoretical mm -hmm. right once you understand how waves work and energy works and it's not what they're telling you you can start manifesting reality whatever reality is you know i i'm not an expert on simulation theory i i, I think it's really compelling um, but either way, when you understand that you're very powerful, you're impossible to control. And so this flatter, uh, the, the round earth model makes you feel about as little and meaningless as you yeah. can. It does. does. It? And I think even the simulation theory limits the possibilities of what this experience is about. And I think it's much more complex and amazing than we could ever imagine. And I do agree that we are extremely powerful beings. Yeah. Yeah. My only problem with, I, like, there are weird shit that, you know, you can't explain. <laughs> and, you know, like the Book of the Dam, you know, Charles Fort and all this. There's, there's shit that has happened documented in history where it's like doesn't work on either model. Right. right, right. <laughs> right? Flat or round. Shit, do blood doesn't start falling from the sky and crick, and there's no bugs in Europe, and suddenly everyone notices, and suddenly bugs fall down from the sky. And, there's stuff that does happen here that just doesn't make sense on either definition of reality. So I'm on board with that. Um, what I don't like about it is the people who go around saying, oh, it's just you and everyone else is an NPC, right, right, right. except for us, a selected few. <laughs> We're not NPCs, but everyone else is, you know, and you're like, I'm sorry. That person in the supermarket might be stupid in front of you and can't figure out how to work the checkout line, even though it's their 90th thousand time going grocery shopping and haven't figured out to have their fucking money or card ready in the bag. You know, like, I get it. But that person is someone's mother, aunt, uncle. They helped them through a cancer or a hard yeah. time. To somebody, that person is not an NPC. Yeah. To you, okay. <laughs> But to say that's a computer simulation, well, then you are too. I, there's, I don't buy the thing that there are only so many thousand errants or whatever people call it in the world and all the rest. No, no, no. Either we're all NPCs or we're all not. And we're all the, the simulations made so when we run into each other in the thing, you, you don't mean anything to that person. You know, I, I just think it's very, um, I don't want to say dehumanizing because. <laughs> Well, the legal term for human is sea monster. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you look in Black's Law Dictionary, because the, the kings and the knights and the dukes, right, they were going around on the crusades and things in the Middle Ages, and they were having uh, children. They were having bastard children, and they didn't want them to have any legal heir to the thrones or the estates. Mm. So they set up the law so that they were sea monsters. They, weren't, they, weren't, they were subhumans. <laughs> They, yeah, so they that way they couldn't claim heir to the throne and all that. And that those laws still stand in our, our law dictionaries. <laughs> of course too. they do. But really, we are humans. We are 
light. Hue means colors, shades of light. We are we are shades of light drawn into a being. So we are H U E mans. We are humans and you humans. Right. right? But we are not legal humans. We're not sea monsters. Funny enough, we're on Admiralty Maritime Law, which is funny they'd make it a sea monster. But so I don't mean dehumanizing, but I mean demand or womanizing. To, to call another man or a woman a, a, a non-player character, they are in your game, but they're not in their game. They're really important to someone, and I think uh, that just causes more division. Yeah, that was a hard one for me to swallow, too. I think we all have the capability of connecting to what you would call source or divine. Let's get into the Book of Wisdom. Where should we start with this? Yeah, I'll, 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 well, I'll just pull it up, and I, I'm just going to the Flat Earth section um, Again, uh, you should order it online. He's called Harry B. Joseph, so I don't want to show all his book because he's selling it, and it's a great book. Um, but we'll just do a little bit of Flat Earth, uh, so I'll share screen. So here's one of the things they don't want us to know is toroidal field and electromagnetism. They want us to think that we're little atoms into little molecules, right? That we're all these, everything just a uh, big bang, and then all of a sudden gas is somehow formed in a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> and made planets and moons and expanding government you're right they don't want you to know that your body doesn't look like you and i look on zoom right now like two meat suits we we only ex we can only perceive a tiny percent of the electromagnetic spectrum 0. 0.000015 right but just like a dog whistle that we know the dog whistle exists because the dog reacts but we don't hear it and then we're told, well, the electromagnetic spectrum is this big. We don't even know that. We only know that what machines we have built to record those spectrums say it's that. For all we know, it's infinite. But all we perceive, all our eyes can see and our ears can hear and our nose can smell, right? All our senses can, can sense is fuck all compared to what we even know is here. And we don't know what else is not, right? So the flat earth, earth is an anagram for heart and ether. So, you know, Einstein had to take away the ether. That's another reason they did it, um, because they don't want you to know how all this works. So electromagnetic fields are responsible for all of the creation. The neutral zero plane of every electromagnetic field is the birthplace of physical matter. And there is no physical matter, but what we perceive as it. It's just a result of two opposing forces equalized on the plane of inertia, meaning the dielectric plane or the neutral plane of the field. So on the left, you see this picture of the human with the flat earth around them. That's what you call the zero point energy plane or the dielectric plane, meaning there's dielectric means electricity can't run through this plane sideways. It has to go up or down. Dielectric means things can't run through it. All right. It can come out of it, but not through it. So that's, Walter Russell called that the still white magnetic plane of God. Or in other words, when you take a breath in, and there's a pause, and you take a breath out, and there's a pause, what is that pause in the middle of nothing? When your heart beats, do do, and then there's a pause, out, in, pause out in what is that pause that's this so the earth is a plane of inertia of its giant electromagnetic toroidal field where we get the phrase planet or plane earth from right so the at the center of every electromagnetic field is walter russell's magnetic white light still it's not moving it's a still white magnetic light that's the most magnetic point within the field. That's why when you put these um, ferrule screens over magnets, you know, like Ken Wheeler shows, you can put these special screens over a magnet. You'll see the toroidal field shape, but it always comes back to center and comes out of center, right? The magnetism goes out and then back in. Um, so the center is the most magnetic point of the field. This is everyone arguing over gravity or buoyancy or density or electrostatics, right? I don't care what you call it. It keeps coming back to the center of the field because that's the most magnetic point. In other words, the earth plane is the magnetic point. Mm. 
So call it electrostatics, call it gravity, call it buoyancy and density. Why does the submarine underwater or the, want to come up to the water surface? Why does the rock want to fall to the right ground and water surface? It's because it's magnetism. So the center of the Earth, as you can see on the left, is the center of the Earth's magnetic field. So here's where you get the stories about the underworld and things under us and over us. We're just on the plane in the middle. And no, water is always flat. The earth is flat, but any moron can see the top of Mount Everest to the bottom of the Pacific Trench. <laughs> That's a long way. It's miles and miles different, right? They're not saying we live on a flat pancake. Right. They're saying this magnetic field of inertia is flat. And due to certain things, some things can go up and down from that. But this is why they can't drill lower. They've tried to drill eight miles below the ocean, uh, the, the ground. They can't go any further. They reach an impen impenetrable barrier. Mm. There was these two guys who went down to the bottom of the ocean in the submarine and saw a lake underneath the ocean that was like a, a freshwater lake. And they tried to get their sub down there, and it kept bouncing off the top. Wow. There's a barrier down there. And uh, they... they weirdly died in a plane crash like a few months after they released that right so the earth is the plane of inertia of its giant electromagnetic toroidal field and that inertia is where we get that so at the center of the field is the white light the magnetic part and at the center of the earth is the center of the magnetic field that's what people call mount meru this big black magnetic mountain have you ever seen yeah. that oh yeah i see in fact, I'll show, I've got a couple of videos here. Hold on, yeah. man. Let me move us down. And for those that are um, listening on the audio end, if you'd like to see the visuals we're presenting, go to YouTube or Rumble or Rockfin. You can see it there. Yeah, because this, this won't make <laughs> sense listening. Um, now, there, this is very old. I got this footage. This is before AI and all that crap. Allegedly, this was a Russian military plane flying over what we would call the magnetic North Pole. Or Mount Meru, and this have you seen I this before? So. Oh wow. You see yeah. that? It's like a giant hole emanating some sort of like energy or something. Yes, there's energy coming in. Like, see that's the thing with the toroidal field. It comes in and out. So you're seeing energy come in from the magnetism, and you're seeing light come out, electric. I'll play it one more time. All right? So they claim there's a big magnetic mountain there called Mount Meru, or Black Rock. The Black yeah. Rock. It's supposed to be 33 miles around. Huh. <laughs> no shit. All right? For those who get into that. Crazy. Right? Now, is this footage legit? I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm just saying, if you haven't seen that, it's supposed to be legit. And then there's... I don't think you can hear... Oh, hold on. I don't think you can hear the audio, but... Tell me if you can hear the audio or not. Otherwise, I'll try to put my mic under the thing. Um, so here's some other alleged footage. Uh, let me move that out of the way. I can hear you. Can this place it. It's located in the center of the North Pole. And it's the center of the Earth magnetic field, known as the Taurus field. That black thing in the center of the whirlwind is the tallest mountain on Earth, far more taller than the Mount Everest. It's so tall that even it keeps reaching out the plants. It's the Roots Negra, or the Black Rock, also known as Mount Marat. Some people also called it Mount Zion. You wouldn't find this massive mountain existence in mainstream science and media because it's deliberately concealed. Because if the world knew that there is such a huge mountain in the center of the earth, it would change the course of history. This includes the true nature of our world will be rewritten and that will undo the globe-shaped earth theory and the entire timeline of the earth from the beginning. And they don't want that. Look how the wind stream passes through that mountain. It blocks the wind stream because of its height and size. Hmm. The Roots Negro, 
or the black rock described by Mercator as 33 French miles in size, or roughly 40 miles in diameter. It's purportedly explained why all compasses point to this location. The biggest shareholder of all the major companies in the world is Black Rock. It's named after this mountain. So the idea is, the theory is that thing is there, and that's why our compasses all point wow. north, because there is that giant magnetic mountain there in the middle. Wow, that's which crazy. is taking all the compasses in or north. Now, what right? year was that video supposedly taken? Uh, that one's yeah, a couple years old. I found that I, like I, whenever I find this stuff, I save it because mm. this stuff just disappears. Right, right. <laughs> like you can't get it anymore. You know, yeah. this stuff's going away. Um, so at the center of the field is the white light, the magnetic point. At the center of the Earth is that thing allegedly where all the energy is being drawn back to and spat back out. So that was the Russian thing. You saw it going in and out. This is why you're getting your Aurora Borealis up there. Why is it in the north you can see these weird lights in the sky? It's because it's coming out of there. Huh. And above that, straight up, is the star, the North Star Polaris. Right. The polar, the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Right? So the sun, moon, stars, and planets are stirred by the rotating, reciprocating hyperboloid at the center of the Earth's magnetic field, the toroidal field, spinning, which is making the motions of the sun, moon, and the outer planets, right? Now, this is, this is an idea. I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm saying this is <laughs> what the Freemasons and people right. teach. Um, so you can see it in all the mandala and all the, all the drawings and all the ancient drawings, the hyperboloid is the macrocosm, the center of the earth, and in your body because everything is a toroidal field. The earth has one, your heart has one, your body has one. Everything we call an atom is really one of these toroidal fields. So in our body, the, the Mount Meru would be the heart. And we have 33 spinal cord coming up the middle, right? So that's our Meru Danda. And so you can see on the right here, energy comes out and it comes in. And around the sides of the toroidal field, it spins around and around and around. Right? So here, I'm on the right side now in the middle. Can you see my cursor? So the earth or the ether or the, the dielectric center plane is the green line where we are. And then the North Pole is in the middle, and then you have the magnetic moon and the electric sun, the feminine and the masculine, right? So they're just, a, they're just a sphere turned inside out. That's what a hyperboloid is. So the magnetic North Pole is the center of the field, the most magnetic point. That's where the ether is getting stirred and then creating the four elements out of counter space, right? So sun is electric and positively charged. That's why it charges you up. That's why your electric fruits grow on top of the trees. They're reaching up for the sun. Mm -hmm. And the moon is, ma and that's masculine. The moon is magnetic, negatively charged, which makes you go to sleep. It's feminine. And that's why the moon is magnetic. So if you've seen tests where people, we've done this with a, la we have a laser temp. When you go out in the moonlight, it's colder in the moonlight than in the shade of the moonlight behind a tree. Have you ever done that test or seen no. that done? Okay, well, you, if you go out at night on a full moon or even a half moon and you see moonlight on the ground, you can take a laser temp guide on the ground. It's colder in the moonlight than it is in the shade under a tree where there's no moonlight. Yet we're being told that the moonlight is the sun bouncing <laughs> off the moon and somehow still bright as a flashlight 280,000 miles away, then it has to be hotter. Yeah. How can hot light... No matter light? how many times you try and explain those mechanics and you mix in an eclipse with that, it will never, ever make sense to me. At least not what well, they try I'll explain and bring the, Right. So mag magnetism is attractive. Mm. It, it attracts. So when the sun's out all day and then this, it's electrifying the ground, the ground's getting hotter. If you don't believe that, move to Arizona. You can go walk barefoot on the concrete at 6 in the morning. Go try to walk barefoot on the concrete at noon in the summer and your feet will light on fire without sandals. The sun charges the ground in the day. The moon's magnetic light pulls that radiation away from it at night 
which is why the ground's colder, which is why your magnetic foods, your vegetables, grow under the soil because it's magnetized. Wow. Right? Electric foods, fruits grow up toward the sun. Magnetic foods like vegetables grow under the magnetic soil because the moon charges that. That's why the farmers plant at a, after a full moon when it starts wa uh, waxing again because the moon has charged the ground for growth at waxing, right? Um, and so you've got your tropics there. So the, on the left again, the start is the stars and they are the stars of the soul system, the solar system. Stars, stairway to heaven, rock stars, gang stars, mob stars, right? trick stars, <laughs> hip stars, movie stars. We're all stars. That is true. We are all built from these lights and energies. So that's your stairway to heaven. Um, and it's called the earth, which is an anagram for the heart because it's the middle of our soul system of our toroidal field. Mm. So your heart is the earth or the ether of your body. So you have the seven layers of heaven are the seven planetary cosmic energies known as the seven Elohim, or right? Or some people call these the um, archons. Oh, wow. The archons are controlling humans. Yes, they are. This is astrology. The position of these things at your birth and every day are controlling you based on their vibration of your blood and the cell salts in your body. They certainly are. Right? So the planets are not these rocks that they say they are flying around in space. They are little suns. They are all little stars or suns. All right? So on the right here again, the sun creates the four seasons by spinning inward toward the Tropic of Cancer. So you've got the equator is the red ring in the middle, and then you've got the Tropic of Cancer on the inside, the little orange ring, and then the outside Tropic of Capricorn. So that's all that's happening is the sun's moving around here in the equinoxes in spring and fall. Then in the summer, the sun's in here closer, which is why it's hot in the northern hemisphere because the sun's right there. And then it gets colder in the winter as the sun goes back out around the outer ring farther away from us. And now it's summer in Australia and South America because the sun's actually out there. Right, So the sun is moving round and round and in, in what we'd call June, July, August. Then it goes back out for fall. Then it goes out here for summer. Then it comes in for spring. <laughs> you see how that's working around? Right? And then it spirals out again. So these are what your tropics are. And this is what's creating what we call winter, summer, and, and spring and fall. This is why it never really gets too hot or too cold on the equator. Because whether the sun is here on the Tropic of Cancer on the inside or out here on Capricorn, the middle band's still getting the sunlight. See that? That's why their winters and summers are they're, they're, they're colder or hotter, but they're not roasting. You know what I mean? It's temperate. It's, it's Goldilocks. This porridge is too hot, this porridge is yeah. too cold, and this porridge in the red is the equator is perfect. Yeah, because no matter what, the sun's always close enough to it, right? Um, so this is Polaris uh, on the bottom left. So there are layers to this firmament, and each of the planets is on a layer. So can you see this black and white yeah. drawing? So... The moon and sun are on an inside ring like this. Then the other ones are on a larger ring outside and more out. They're on different layers and different heights. That's why they have different uh, orbits, let's mm -hmm. call them, right? That's why they say Venus takes this many years and, and Pluto takes 50 years and this takes that. They're higher, farther, and moving at different speeds. They're still going around the same lap, which is Mount Meru in the middle of the North Pole. It's just they're higher, farther distances and different heights and layers and different speeds. That's all. So on the bottom left is a time lapse of Polaris. So that's the, the North Star. It, you can see all the stars. This is King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Arthur means the bear, and Polaris is the center of Arcturus, the constellation, the Big Dipper. Arcturus, which means the bear, King Arthur. But Polaris never moves. Now, we're told that we're spinning a 1,000 miles around this way, 
circling the sun in a corkscrew at 666,000 miles an hour, while the sun is corkscrewing around the galaxy at 700, whatever, whatever speed, while the galaxy is corkscrewing around that. But this star is dead still every night. It never moves. Right. Right? Start spinning your chair. Go get on a roller coaster ride that's going upside down, sideways, around, and this and that, and then try to look at your wife <laughs> who's, who's standing outside at the ticket. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't yeah. see her. But that's what's happening here. They're saying, well, you're spinning around on a roller coaster ride, but you can keep eye contact with your wife the whole time, even though you're on the octopus <laughs> doing this. No way. Yeah. No way, right? Um, so this is why they have different speeds of motion and why the ancients called them the wandering stars because they're not fixed like the other stars, right? So this is sunset. That's the sun in the evening or the sun in the fall. And then Horus, which is an Irish word for the, the sun or the horizon, that's the sun on the horizon at, at the morning. So you can see them placing their feet inside the dome. And the pole they have to a rope is the magnetic North Pole, mm -hmm. which they are pulling. So they're talking about the spinning of the North Pole. Right. But not Polaris. It's not spinning. It's dead straight. Right? So Horus is the sun and Set is the moon. And they are being moved by the center pole. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon and the wandering planets are moving around us. We're not moving around them. Right? So as we talked about, that's an anagram, move the H. Yeah, it's an anagram for the heart and the ether. Earth. It's an, you can see the word heart. Yeah. Can't you see it? H-E-A-R-T. Mm -hmm. And you can see ether. The A-E used to be a word. A-E-A -A also is A-E. We have it in Danish still. A-E-T-H-E-R, the ether. Right? It just means the middle. So it's the center of the soul system. It's the balance also between good and evil. So that's why we have what we think is dualism here. We think we're in a duality world of good and evil. So the Freemasons stand on the black and white checkerboard, which is symbolizes duality, good and evil. And it also symbolizes spirit, light, and matter, black, yin and yang. So spirit in the world of what we call matter. If you take gematria, where you assign each letter a number, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, black and white each equal 11 in gematria. If you spell out black as numbers and white as numbers, that's your 1111 code. Have you ever heard of the 1111 yeah. code? That's black and white. Black and light, yin and yang, 1111 code, spirit and matter. That's the checkerboard here. Spirit's white, matter's black. Because spirit comes from the white, still magnetic light in the center of the dielectric plane, the space between your heartbeats, right? So if you take the circle of light, have you seen the flower of life before? Yeah. You can make 19 concentric circles out of the, it, when it's drawn in 2d you can take a circle around the middle and you can take 19 concentric circles around it all touching and that's the 2d representation that's why the masons are always saying this happened they do everything on the 19th this is the 19th that happened the 19th when the right and fake history they put the 19 19 19 19 mm -hmm. But when you take, if you take those circles and turn them into ping pong balls, let's say, right, and make a 3D expansion of that flower of life, there will be 33. Uh -huh. There will be the 19 on the plane, and then the bottom and tops that come to make it around, <laughs> around reality turn into 33. Right. So this is your 33. And then if you take the flower of life, expand it into 33, and look at it geometrically, you can draw a cube around that ping pong ball shaped circle. So that's the cube of Saturn. The black cube is black. That symbolizes the physical 3D world of matter. Like I said, when you take the flower of life into 3D and turn it into physical geometry, you can draw a cube around that ball. And that's why these people worship Saturn or the black cube. Because it's the black cube because matter is black. That's why they don't worship the white cube. They worship the black cube because 
that spirit, the flower of life, stretched into 3D, 19 goes into 33 and turns into the cube. Mm. So all things in this world are cubes and have six sides, six, six, six. Saturn, oh. right? <laughs> So everything is made out of a. Does this make yeah, sense? Yeah, dude. To you I, I'm following. I <laughs> yeah, am following. Okay. This is great. Okay. okay. So everything is toroidal fields. Everything is electromagnetic toroidal fields. Your desk, pen, your head, that checkerboard, be everything. Mm -hmm. The Earth is one, meaning the middle. So, and in the middle of the electromagnetic color spectrum is green. Now, I won't get into this. There's no such color as green. Green is a weird thing our brains draw for a different kind of white light we can't perceive. Yeah. So we can perceive white. We can't actually perceive green. When there's still magnetic white light, our brain just draws it as green so we can see. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as green. And that's why it's in the middle plane, right? That's why the earth is green, the sky is blue, and hell is red. The volcano fire is red, right? Blue is up. Blue chakra on top, red chakra on the bottom, green chakra right here through the center line. Oh, yeah. See that? Very so nice. everything is every everything is the same. So above the green is the blue, the blue sky, the blue chakra, right? As and blue comes after green on the color light spectrum. Mm. And below the green is the red. Like I said, that's when you get into your yellows, oranges, and reds, right? So the world we see around us is actually within us because we are humans. Everything is light. Light and sound are the same thing. They're just different moving speeds of light. Mm. And different. You can see, certain, like I said, we can see this much of the electromagnetic light spectrum, but we know there's more, but we can't see it. And we can only hear this much, but we know there's more. The dog hears the dog whistle. We know there is a sound there. There's no difference between light and sound. And we are light condensed into a physical form. And our experience of this place is our five senses perceiving light energy. That's all we're perceiving is light energy and drawing it in our brains and our minds and hearing it, right? We're just reconstructing a big mesh of light together and we think it's real. And it is right now we're getting into simulation. Mm -hmm. Is it real? Isn't it real? Well, here's another explanation for what simulation theory is, right? So the earth is the heart, meaning the middle, the middle of the field, the earth is green. Yeah. The world we see around us is actually within us. As I just said, you don't see your brains redrawing to your mind what you think you see. And when we astral project out of ourselves with a physical body, we are actually leaving our plane. Like when we dream, you know, when you go to sleep and dream, you're actually not here, but it's just as real as here because what is real, you know? Yeah. Here, real is what you think is going on here, and in a dream, real is what you think is going on there. What's the fucking difference, right? So we're actually leaving this plane we call Earth and entering what's called the astral plane. So there are different planes above, physical, non-physical, several levels, etheric planes, then the mind plane where all this comes from. So heaven is headvin, your headvin, and hell is your heels down below. Heaven is above the earth or the heart. Your head's above your heart. Hell's below your heart. And that's through the blue sky. This corresponds with your seven chakras. So you can see on the left here, the guy here, you got the green heart chakra, and then it gets blue, purple, and magenta. This is why your royals keep wearing purple. They always wear a purple tie or purple rain or purple this and right. They're trying to say they're better than you because purple is the color of the enlightened. This is what they're doing. Right. right? Um, so this is what's going on. That corresponds with the chakras. So in order to go to heaven or heaven through the blue sky, we have to go through the blue chakra in our head. So head and heaven are the same roots. Your head is heaven because it's the place where your consciousness forms. You got your pineal gland, optic thalamus, right? You got all your glands here. We won't get into that. I did that. If anyone wants to see that, I did that with uh, Brandon Thomas, and he's going to release that yeah. soon. So we're just talking about frequency ranges of light. Mm -hmm. See that? You got low frequency and higher frequency ranges and high and low, and they make the colors. 
Sky is blue, comes after green. Earth, heart, center. Earth is nature. Green is which the heart color spectrum. Earth is the balance point. And that's where we are on the plane of good and evil. That's why we live on duality, because we actually live on the plane in the middle of what we're calling good is God, evil is devil. Mm -hmm. So the devil is evil. <laughs> it's the same word. It just it took some letters right. around, right? Oh. Yeah, good means God. It's just got an extra O, and evil is devil. They just added a D on. Right. So it's a soul system, not a solar system. The <sighs> earth is the heart of the soul system in the middle. The seven planets come from the seven colors of the electromagnetic spectrum. Seven notes in the main music scale. There's 12 with the minors, but you got the seven. Seven colors of the rainbow. Seven this, seven this, right? There's seven, seven major organ centers. Seven, 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 everywhere. That's this. Each planet, or call them little suns if you want, or call them little portals or dimensional portals, whatever you want, give off their own frequency of light, which influences the mind until we learn to outgrow matter, get out of our lower vibrations, and turn to spirit, grow to a higher state of consciousness, then the low vibrations of these planets that make us physical don't affect us. It's like everything so Saturn, is as above, so below, and we are micro-representations of a macro-being, if you will, right? Yes, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got it, yeah. That's what astrology is about. That's why astrologers can take where your sun and your moon and these other five wandering planets were at your birth chart because these things are synthesizing your blood at your birth and every day afterward the minerals that you form are resonating with them and your body will be made of angels angles of condensed light angles the the priesthood changed the word angle into angels in the middle ages to talk about this you are just a condensation point of angles and the day you were born, you were built with a different mineral composition than I was that are resonating with these angles. That's why Virgos behave like this and Tauruses behave like that. But the Virgo who had his moon in this seventh house and had mm. this and that is a little different than the other Virgo. See? Yeah. So Saturn or Satan is the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. And when you read J.R. Tolkien... Gandalf took 19 years to figure out what was going on between the Lost Ring and this and that. And a hobbit's not an adult till he's 33. And it was 19 years till Frodo did this and 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, and 33. Right? That's what, this is what they're talking. The Lord of the Rings is an anagram. For, it's an allegory. That guy was totally in a part of a group of people oh, yeah. who knew this like that. He's, that's so full of shit, that J.R. Tolkien story. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. so each planet has their own layer of the firmament which explains the speeds of the celestial bodies that's why like we said they're not moving at the same the same speeds and orbits you could call them or rotations um, but you see it like all through history here's a persian miniature of the seven heavens dante's seven layers of heaven seven nine layers of hell right um you always see these ancient drawings with these layers this is what they're talking about the sun's on its own ring. The moon's on its own ring. Mm -hmm. Venus is on its own ring, right? They're all on their own ring. And this is all encoded in the Bible. So it's the soul system because our we are built from the energies of this thing. Right. Um, you know, we don't have to totally dwell. So the Freemason, uh, the Bible is actually old Druidic tarot. This is one, we won't get into this. I think we might have touched this last time about the ancient Irish history hidden. Um, but Genesis 1-3, let there be light. Everything is made of light. The universe is created out of light waves. The Taurus field is a unit of light. The light projecting this reality is Polaris, that central, the center star we talked about that doesn't move, symbolized as the all-seeing eye in the sky with light being projected behind it. Can you see the, the Masonic checkerboard yes. in the middle? Black and white. White is spirit. Black is reality. You've got these poles, the four seasons. Then you've got the sun and the moon on the left. See that? And then see the sun on the left and yep. the moon? And the all-seeing eye. <laughs> right? 
So, so that was Genesis. In Isaiah 40, 22, he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. That's the firmament with the rings. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, 16, and God made two great lights. That's the sun and the moon, the greater to rule the day and the lesser to, to rule the night. Or in other words, the masculine sun principle and the magnetic female principle. So God created the sun and moon. The moon emits its own light source. That is not the sun's light bouncing off the moon. It's its own light. That's why it's colder in the darkness. It is not reflecting sunlight, sun's electric, male, moon's female. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So that's the royal arch you see in the middle here. That's the firmament or what some people call the dome. Is there a dome? What is it made out of? Is it metal? Is it minerals? Is it electromagnetic? Is it ice? I don't know. I don't, I'm not here to claim to know. I'm just saying this is what's being taught in Freemasonic lodges. So I'm not saying this is reality either. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm showing you another perspective. Yeah. So it's called heaven. So you have a firmament yourself. That's where your body's energy stops. At the I got you can see my chrome dome. <laughs> There's my dome. Right? So heaven has the word even in it, balance. The firmament is the even point between this world and the next layer above. So you have to at balance all aspects of life, balance the two hemispheres of the brain, and balance the chakras so you can get into heaven. Not meaning die and go see Jesus. Meaning meditate, open up the dormant right brain cells. They tell you we only use 10% of our brain. 90% is dormant. No, we do, but the people who made the science had 100%. That's why they were building pyramids and buildings we can't comprehend and coming up with sciences like this that we can barely understand. <laughs> we, we think a 160 is a genius IQ. Imagine your IQ is 1600. Right. That's what these people, <laughs> right? And then you'll always see in free Masonic art, I'm still on the right here, see the stars under the Polaris all-seeing eye. So those are the seven planets or the seven wonders of the world. Right. The layers of heaven, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. Yeah, we know there's Pluto and Uranus. They didn't count that because you actually can't see them with the visual eye. Uh -huh. So that that's like telescopes. So we know they're there, or maybe they even aren't. But <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't count in this system because we're not on a system of nine. We're on a system of seven. Um, so, yeah, you get the firmament. Um Genesis, God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above. So the boat on the water in Freemasons, you can see here on the water down here on the uh, left of the picture, um, that's the ethereal worlds beyond this world. So that's the other layers, or you could call them dimensions, but let's call them layers of consciousness or perception, yeah. right? If you look at stars with a telescope, you can see them twinkle. That's another thing when you get a P900, you don't see Saturn as a rock in the sky. It's shimmering like it's in a swimming pool almost. Yeah. Have you ever, you know, when the sunlight's like dancing on us, when you, when you dive in the swimming pool and then on the bottom of the pool from, cause you've disturbed the waves, the water's like all yeah. shimmery. That's what these stars actually look like through telescopes and P900s. They don't look like rocks. Right. Um, you can see them twinkle, 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 little star, like as if they're, yeah, light shining through water. Um, they're shining through the ether, which is, you know, it's it's like a gaseous water kind of layer almost. Um, then on the right of Freemason art, you get the pentacle, not the pen. A pentagon is a has like solid lines. Pentagram is a star. So if you if you drew solid lines around the outside, you'd get a pentagon. That's different. Um, so that symbolizes the five elements: fire, air, earth, water, and ether, where it all comes from. Sometimes in alchemy, air and ether are synonymous with each other. But spirit's on the top. So this is your Satanism. They always draw it upside down and put spirit to the bottom. Um, this is Michelangelo's Vesuvius man. You know the picture where he's, he's, he's got his arms and legs yeah. spread? That's this. He's got his head on the top, his two legs spread out, and his arms on the bottom. So that's spirit where the head comes in all the way down. That's Allah. If you start on the right, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, mm. Allah, <laughs> right? Wow. 
Um, so it's on the top because spirit, the ether is the most important element because spirit is also ether. Mm -hmm. So the ether is the base of all the physical matter. Ether is the substance that connects the physical world to the spiritual or astral world and etheric and astral planes and then the mental plane where it really all comes from light. All is light, really. But the ether is the medium through which the light source from the still magnetic white light comes into what we call the physical or perceive as the physical. That's why we have five senses, right? And the five ways the body reports electrical impulses back to our pineal gland. So there's a lot of fives too. Even in the music scale, you'll have the five flat notes. You got the seven white notes and the five black notes. So there's your seven five connection there. Um, and we talked about the checkerboard. So that's the black, white, spirit and light um, and negative and positive electric uh, we've talked about all that um so the lighter something is the higher it rises we know that with a helium balloon it's the same with the journey of the soul the more attached we get to the the materialism here this is what all these people are trying these priests were supposed to be doing the more attached we get to everything here the more materialistic that transcends it translates into our etheric body and our astral body and our light body and so we want to stay here. We don't want to go. We get used to it. We get heavier, like denser, right? This is the fall of man. Um, so it falls due to heavy attachment to the mind. If you think about all the sins, greed, lust, envy, hate, jealousy, sloth, most of them are you want something from here, right. isn't it? It's like all the sins are like you, you do something really bad because you want something from here that you wouldn't want if you were focused on love, compassion, you know, all the other things. Um, so it makes what you call your soul more heavy bound to the earth and body. And then you have to quell all the chaos and emotions. That This is what meditation is about is trying to get up there and trying to let go. of. It's not that there's anything wrong with the physical stuff. Because it's fun here, like good foods, food, you know, good, like it's great here. It's fun right? for some people. So th the other thing is, you know, I talked to Beth Martins about this. There's a lot of people who get into this Eastern yogic shit and they're trying to totally do this and transcend. And sure as fuck, they get cancer or get sick. It's like, yeah, you're trying to get out of the physical plane. And sure enough, your body's like, well, then I need to die. Oh, shit. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Wow. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I'm dying of cancer. It's like, yeah, you wanted to. You're the one who's been trying to turn so yogic Interesting. that you have a light explosion and get out of here. Well, your body's got to go. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then all of a sudden they decide, I'm not ready to leave. I love pasta <laughs> and sex and good music. And <laughs> you know? and you're like, well, then fucking which right. is it, mate? You know, and, and you see this a lot. There are a lot of people who are like, oh, you're a demon if you want to stay here and and we're all trying to get out and it's like well everyone's different i'm personally having a great time in this incarnation it doesn't make me a demon like i i help people for free and fun and all that it just means i'm not having such a miserable time that i'm ready all about to go. perspective man all about perspective yeah so they'll call them, they'll call me a luciferian <laughs> Well, hey, I've got like the checkered board like behind it. me, so I guess I'm Illuminati, Freemason. Yeah. <laughs> <chill. laughs> Quite interesting. Orange is, the, orange is the color that opens up the pineal gland, actually, with frankincense, but that's, we won't get into that. <laughs> so you have to, if you want to get out of here, you have to quell the chaos and emotions and detach from the external world and just become lighter and at peace with everything. This is what meditation is about, to shut off all the world externally for an hour or half an hour a day and get into your right side and start opening the light in your head so you're more like this. It doesn't mean you have to turn into a ball of light right now. It just means you have to find some balance, you know. But then only then will the soul pass upward into the light. Um, so the word reality is the same word as realize. So your level of realization is your level of what you perceive as reality. But you can only experience one reality at a time, right? So then, on, yeah, so we did the checkerboard. On the right, the six stairs. So you'll always see six. The seventh is the top. That's the earth ground here at the bottom. 
So that's your seven steps. That's the seven steps we have to do up our chakra. That's your seven chakras that we have to go up to reach our higher self through quietness, meditation, and trying to let go of a little bit more of the physical stuff and, and be more spiritual, right? And, and that, that's represented by the planets. And the Quran says the same, and Allah has made the earth for you as a carpet spread out. And it is Allah who has created seven heavens of the earth and thereof, right? So it, this is all it's talking about. Chronicles, tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. So they're talking about the firmament in this. And God said, let there be light and let to divide the days from the night. Well, this is funny in Genesis because before the sun is what makes day and night, right? Night is when there's no sun. But God makes the days before he makes the sun. <laughs> if you take this literally, how the fuck can you have days before you have the sun? It's a metaphor for the signs and the reasons and days and years. Let them be for signs is talking about the zodiac. The stars are the signs of for what is to come. This is what astrology and the zodiac and, you know, all the shit you've heard me talking about, with the cell salts. They're, it's a clock. It's signs and a clock. That's all it is. Um, firmament comes from the Latin word firmus, meaning firm. So I don't, again, I don't, I, I'm not saying there is or isn't one there. We can't live, we, we live in a pressurized gas system and that doesn't happen without a container. You cannot have a pressurized gas system without a container. <laughs> gas violently explodes to equal, to equalize with the, with whatever it is. Right. So there's something up there. What is it made of? I don't know. Revelation 7 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or the sea or any tree. So it's just talking about the four pillars or foundations, right? Um, and then we've all seen, usually, this one's in color. Um, you can see the picture on the right yeah. down here his head's peeking through the ethereal barriers of the earth. So that it's his head because that's where consciousness is. And, and once you astral travel and get out and open up these brain centers and actually cause light to explode and activate your dormant gray matter, you can start astral traveling and seeing into the other worlds and seeing light bodies in etheric. Right on. Right? Um, so I, do you get into alchemy yeah. at all? Yeah, I've done plenty so of shows about alchemy. Right, yeah. So, you'll see here. So, you know that for people who don't do alchemy, the the male principles are phallus. So, the triangle on the left here, fire, it points up like a penis because it's a male principle. Fire and air are male principles. And then the earth and water have the open, the, the, the flat part on top like a vagina, the receiving. So, those are the feminine, feminine principles. Right. right. So again, sun is electric, moon is magnetic, and then they have what the Masons call the black sun here, which is where those two come out of. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's Polaris, the all seeing eye, right over the center of Mount Meru in the middle. Right. And then you got the northern lights are caused by the black sun's rays and the Masonic teachings. Um, and then you got the sun and the moon phases, are, which they say are caused by the black sun energy going up to Polaris and back and then projecting this out. Um, Summerland, right? Yeah. We don't have to get into that. It's all totally weird. Yeah. But So here's some different cosmologies. But again, like corpuscular waves. So I'm looking at the right here. Whenever you see the sunlight coming through the clouds, it's it doesn't come straight down, right? It scatters out on this triangular angle. Right. But that can't happen if the sun's 93 million miles away. By the time it hit the earth, it's so far away that, that those light would actually be more straight down, up and down. You'd see every hole in that cloud would have lights coming down, but they never are. It's because the sun is much smaller, much closer. That's why the light is shooting out on those angles. You can triangulate them. That cannot happen, right? And then we start to see, because of this, when you look at, see, see the Freemason uh, compass and square? Yep. That's just the drawing here between the angles of the black sun, Polaris, 
see the compass in the square here. So that's what this is trying to show you when these lunar halos and solar halos, we see sun dogs, they call them sometimes. And sometimes here you see an upside down arc. Mm -hmm. This is this is these two lights reacting from their source and also shining off the whatever the firmament is, the dome or whatever. Yeah. Rainbows are the same. That's crazy. Right? So stars are light and then they might this on the left is what when you got a p900 and you look at the yeah. stars and the planets they look like this like i talked about the water in a swimming pool right exactly um so there are people who think there are some kind of waters above i don't know that it's water like we call water like you could dig a bath up there right it could be some form of ether or plasma. you know a condensed plasma yeah like a Plasma, hydrogen-based thing, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't claim to know. Yes, exactly. A different state of yeah. water, just like steam, ice, right. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, like a plasmal form. Um, so, yeah, we've pretty much done all this. And, again, that's your, that's your I Israel. So, we've got, the, we've got the Jews right now in Israel. <laughs> genociding the Palestinians because they want Jerusalem, the Israeli Holy Land, Isis, Ra, and El. Isis is the moon, Ra is the sun, and El is Saturn. Or it's your left brain, right brain, and your pineal gland if you want to do it in your body. This is the Holy Land. Now what they're claiming, oh, uh, the Dome of the Rock Mosque is built on top of the, the Temple of Solomon. We might have talked about this last time, right? I don't think so. They're saying... Uh, Okay, what they're do the Jews are saying, oh, the Dome of the Rock is built on top of the old Temple of Solomon, and they're going to knock it down to try to build, rebuild the Temple of Solomon. And, of course, it's the holy place to the, to the Muslims, so that's going to cause a jihad. And I won't get into it, but the jet, Israel, Israel is in England. <laughs> Jerusalem is Edinburgh, Scotland. And Israel was in England from Avebury to Wiltshire physically. Now, that was named after the head mm. and named after the spirit in the sky. So they always take the science, then they take the physical part, then they name the towns and cities after that. So these Jews are in the wrong place. And my Scottish friends, we always laugh. They're like, don't tell them we don't want them coming <laughs> and attacking it. <laughs> yeah. We don't need them inside in Edinburgh, right? Yeah. This is Isis, Ra, and El. Uh -huh. It's in your head. The Holy Land is in your head. The temple of the soul of man. Soul is Latin for what? Sun. And mon is Latin for moon. The temple of the sun and the moon built without sound or hammer. How the fuck do you build a temple without a sound? Because it's between your two temples. It's the temple you build when you do what we're talking about and meditate and raise the Christos and get into this higher state of spiritualism and not... What are they focused on? The land. Yeah. The Jews want the physical, right? We want the land that we call Palestine, yeah. right? And then they call ourselves God's chosen people. You're like, God you're, God doesn't say go murder fucking people and steal their land. No shit. You, you can't. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. evil. That's the devil. You're the devil, right? But they don't know this because the Jesuits set this up. This is great information. Right. I'm glad that we went di this direction. This is a much different direction than I've ever gone when discussing our cosmology, <laughs> yeah. and I think it's perfect for what we were going to discuss oh. today. Yeah. Sorry, that other one wasn't loading. No, it's okay. um, because there's a lot of people. Do you get into like Jason Bershears Yeah, I've had him a couple of times. Right. So... You know, there's people who are into, like, the plasma apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to stop sharing something. My computer's not liking whatever's happening here. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I had wanted to pull that yeah, up. Yeah, go Let for me it. just go try one it. last time. There's ancient structures, right, where you see this. There's a line and then an upside-down cup and a top cup and then two balls on mm -hmm. the side. It looks like a man almost, like a man with his arms up and his legs out and down. And there are people saying, yeah, it is true when, when there's a plasma thing that happens, that shape sort of appears. Right. But it, people like, are saying the, that Like what we see on the petroglyphs, the, the little men with explosions coming out of their hands. That's what I was going to yeah. show you. Yeah, there's, there's a line with, two, with like a cup upside down and a cup down and then two little balls. 
yes, there there was a guy who did a video called the primer fields where this shape comes up in a plasma when when the two magnetic fields have a plasma apocalypse, yeah. you could call it, or a plasma eruption. But that's also it's also a symbol for what we live on. In the to when you take the toroidal fields like that with the center plane and then the toroidal field around. See, that's not necessarily the sign that the ancients recorded a plasma apocalypse in the sky and all drew that symbol. That's another ancient symbol for this place we live in. You know, so a lot of people get that wrong. Am I? But yeah. Right on. We got a few minutes left. I would love to get your thoughts on something that's been presented a couple of times, and that's the extra lands theory that we, there's possible that we have extra continents that normal folks like us are unable to access. What we are calling our planet is much larger than we think. What do you think about that? Yeah, I've seen those. I've seen there are some ancient maps that claim to be from a Buddhist temple from uh, like, I don't know, a thousand years ago. Uh, many different maps. And there are maps in certain buildings that do show that outside of this alleged ice wall, there are other continents. It makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. I, the only reason I don't go there is we're not even allowed to go out to the right, ice wall. Right, right. <laughs> All nations can have a world war together, but they, they agree they won't let you go on a... Antarctica, because as Dave Weiss says, it's to save the penguins. <laughs> they agree on that. So I don't like to speculate on that because there's no fucking way on earth I could tell you yes or no. I could tell you what I think about it. I think it's very plausible. And it makes sense then of what you would call an extraterrestrial might be someone who has a technology to come in here from the outer lands and is doing mining and things in here. Or maybe we're locked in here for a reason, right? I'm totally open to the idea, but to me, I don't, it just makes us sound as fucking stupid as the, you know, the, the heliocentrists because <laughs> I, I couldn't prove it in a million years. A couple maps, I don't know who made right. those maps. I don't know where they came from. There are stories written of people who suddenly somehow got out of the ice wall through a, a crack and a claim to have met people from out there. Can I verify any of it? No. I'm totally open yeah. to it. And Dave Weiss has done a lot of stuff showing, like, it seems very possible that our governments are trading with some other government out there, like, working together. Now, this could be the Greys. I think the Grey aliens, I, I do believe they're real. I think they are terra-terrestrial under us. Because the Hopis and many Native American tribes, and people who even see them... William Cooper, they say these ships crash through the ocean with some technology where instead of blowing up, the water somehow spreads around them, or they go into the side of a mountain like it, like it's holographic. Mm -hmm. You never see them shoot out into space or come from space. They come into the water, out of the water, or a mountain, and the Hopi's like, they won't go to Superstition Mountain in Arizona. They said the little gray devils live under there, and it's a weird mountain. It's just a hill. It takes an hour to hike up. And 22 hikers a year go missing there, and people can't figure out, how do you get lost on an hour climb? And the Hopis are like, that's because there's little gray bastards yeah. down there. They're, they're abducting them, you know? So I do think that, like, grays are real. And I, they used to call them fairies right, right, right. or elves or the for them. But same shit, they wanted to take you down in the fairy den and breed with you and abduct you, know? Like, so maybe they are outer terrestrial. Maybe that would be another name for them. If there are those outer lands, maybe extraterrestrials are just that. Outer terrestrials, extra land outside the ice wall. Um, the problem I have with that, it would make sense because that's the other thing. It's, and it's good to speculate. Like we can now, it's just good you tell people we're in fantasy yeah. land here right now. We're in story. I have land. a <laughs> disclaimer at the beginning of every show. This is a live action role play for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, and I think it's important we now say we are now entering the land of total yeah. speculation. So my problem is that the sun and the moon and the, the wandering planets we can record and the stars around the dome that are moving in procession at one degree every 72 years procession, they happen every 24 hours around what we're calling us, mm -hmm. right? So... Are there other ones outside? That would mean that the dome is fucking huge if it's eternal. I have a problem with everything turning around us like a clock 
but then there's more outside the ice wall, but yet we're in a confined enclosure. We're in a gas pressurized system. Well, if we're in one, that means the outer lands are in one too. Unless each one has its own dome. Like imagine a bunch of snow yeah, domes. Yeah, I've, I've seen that model. Actually. You know? yeah. Oh yeah, like a bunch of Christmas mm-hmm. bubbles kind of. But then my question is, how did you, the people who claim to have gotten out there, how did you get out of ours and into that? How did you get through the barrier of the gas pressurized system? So, you know, if you want to look at it logically, there are, I have some questions like that. Um, but I'm open to the idea that I don't know what the fuck's out there. And as we said in the beginning, it's not our job to say where we live and what else is there. Our job is to say, you told us we live here, and it, clearly we don't. Now we're all trying to figure out, yeah, well, we want to know, well, what is this shit? Where are we? What's going on here? You know, we, everyone wants to know. Um, but I think it's a it's a mistake for us to say that we need to, you know, the ballers will say, well, if it's not this, if, unless you tell me what it is, <laughs> then I'm just going with the ball model. And that would be like, that would be like the prosecution in a murder trial saying, well, Chris, yeah, you have three alibis. You were seen at a party, videotaped and recorded. We, we have proof you weren't at the site of the murder at that time. We have it on tape and witnesses. But until you tell me who killed this person, <laughs> we're just going with you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, you, fuck it. it's your job to find the murderer. If you don't find the murderer, <laughs> that's not how it works. It's not our job to say where we live. It's our job to say, prove to us that we live where you say we live. Because I, I don't have a fucking clue. I, I love don't. it. <laughs> this know? has been great information. Steve, thank you so much. Before we close out, remind the audience how they can find Glowbusters and all your content. Space Space Busters, Busters. yeah, I know. I, no, I, we always get confused. Glowbusters are the one who found us for the same reason. We got the same damn logo and a, a similar name. First thing I got to do, I never plug my book. Uh, I'm the author of a children's book called The Dukes of Dents. So if you need a Christmas present for uh, kids, it's for kids like five to eight years old. Um, They're on all Amazon platforms. I know Amazon's the devil, but they print your books for you so we don't have to, like, you know, go out of pocket. Um, And we have another one coming up uh, that uh, Jeremy Nell's illustrating from Germ Warfare. Have you ever talked to Jeremy, Germ? Okay, he's illustrating the next book. Um, But we're Space Busters, not Glow Busters. We are on – we have channels on uh, YouTube, which – we can't put everything there because we can't say this stuff. Uh, BitChute, Odyssey, I think we have a Rumble channel, and Vigilante.tv. Um, and then if you need to write me, uh, SpaceBusters at Hotmail.com if you want to get a hold of me. We have a Facebook page, but nobody <laughs> engages. <laughs> it's like, no one right cares. On. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but thanks for having me on again. I love talking. Yeah, with we'll you. definitely do it stuff. again. Much more we can get into. We'll have the link to Space Busters right in the description for everyone. And until next time, everyone have an excellent evening. We'll talk again tomorrow. We'll see y'all then.